dearest reader, it is time to talk about Bridgerton. As you know, season three just dropped, and let me tell you, there's a lot of mixed reviews, but I'm going to give you my personal opinion, okay? There's so many things that I liked about it, and then there's so many things that I, mm, it's not even so many things that I didn't, but there were a few things. So we're just going to run through a few of my points here, okay? First things first is points for representation. Shonda Rhimes always has to throw in lots of different people of color. Oh, in the beginning, I believe during the Queen's, um, I don't even know what they call it. The like introduction to the Queen, when they like meet up to her and bow down and like she picks the diamond of the season or whatever. Yeah, there was a, a, a mother who was deaf and she was signing to her daughter. So I thought that was kind of cool that they put that in there. Hey, I seen a video about that, and and they and they like that. See, yeah, so that that was really cool that they put that in there. And then of course you got lots of people of color, a couple of new characters. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When the beginning started, I'm just like, here we go, Penelope in this like yellow dress. Like, what's going on with her makeover? But then she popped out. She took some of her whistle down money, her pen money. I know she didn't spend none of her pen money. That girl, all that money she made from being Lady Whistledown, she used her money and got her some nice clothes. And she looked really good. Green looks really good on people with red hair. So it was a really good color choice for her, I think. I really enjoyed looking at all of Penelope's new outfits and different dresses and stuff for this season. And her, and her hair was cute. Like, she, she did that. Her mom, it was almost like a Cinderella situation with with Portia Featherington and her sisters. It was definitely giving Cinderella vibes. Like the mom cares about her girls, obviously, but I don't know. Some of the stuff she was saying to Penelope, I'm just like, okay, I guess you know, you care about her, but it, it just seemed like you don't care about her feelings. She don't care about their feelings. That's what that is. This whole season was way more whimsical than Bridgerton has ever been. So season three is definitely giving a different type of feel. It's almost like it's a whole like fictional land, like like wherever they live at, it's not a real place <laughs> anymore. It's like a parallel universe to what you know things really are. Cause it's super whimsical. I like the queen's hair with the spinning like crystals or whatever. But you would never really see that. They had a, a episode where they were like showing inventions and they just invented, he just invented a light or something. And it's like, it's so basic. A lantern, I think it was, I don't know what it was, but it was something that they just invented. So it's like, you know they don't have no motor thing to keep that thing spinning in that queen hair. Get out of here with that. That was, that was fake. But, again, everything was like super whimsical. Cressida, her shoulder pads, <laughs> shoulder pads, her shoulders were getting like bigger and bigger and bigger. Every ball. And I know it's because her mom wanted her to get like noticed. She needed her to be, you know, get married. She's trying to hurry and marry her off. But them outfits didn't know <coughs> honey. One of them was head. I don't know if I can post it. If I can find it and post it. 
the future parent of the ton. I don't know. But I think that that's really cool. They get to come up in society. And uh, again, that's just another form of representation that I really do like. And I'm pulling in work right now. So if I can like come back in later and talk about more, I will. But if not, I hope you like this video because we got to watch the next, you know, half of Bridgerton when it come out in June, y'all. So, yeah. Okay. I got to go. Peace out.